You saw this man, he, he went, ran, ran straight into him, and he was like this, what's going on? And then he looked again, and he realized it's actually a mirror, and it's myself I'm looking at. He has he had proposognosia. Proposognosia. A condition where you can't recognize faces. So the face area of the brain is not working. So that is the fusiform face area. Okay? Whoa. Yeah, this here he is. Like he even looks guy. like Robin Williams a yeah. little bit. This guy was a phenomenon. So I, oh, I, he's dead. Oh, he's I was dead just going to ask you if we could bring him on. Oh, yeah. You, uh, this guy was a superstar. I mean, this was one of Ramachandran's friends. So because of Ramachandran's... Uh, so that term's ghost receptor, you were saying? That's yeah. like a real scientific term? Well, I came up with it, actually. You so, came up with yeah, it. That's one, a sick term. One of my, my, That's one in of my, the title. Yeah, it's the title of the paper, I think it's called um, The Ghost Receptor in the Brain, Why We See Freddy Krueger During Dream or Sleep Paralysis, or something like that. And I published this. Uh, yeah. Why We See Freddy Krueger? Yeah, something like that. It's about the Freddy Krueger phenomenon and why we see the hat man and all that. Can you explain that, the hat man thing? Hat man. Was I just talking with you about that the other day? Yeah. Right, yeah. So why do people see these Freddy Krueger-like monsters and ha people with hats and all that in, in sleep paralysis or these these states that are between wakefulness and, and, yeah. and, and, and dreams? And the reason, I think, is the following. When you are sleeping, first of all, you might say, why do most people just see a shadow in the corner of the room? Why a shadow? What is that about? And here I would say the following. The limbic sense centers of your brain, emotional core, the fear centers are hyperactive. That's the fear representing as the corner, the, the monster. And then the what's called visual processing, the, 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 the visual, the act of seeing itself is very hierarchical. It occurs in a hierarchy. So, so first of all, in the back of your brain, you have a structure in the occipital lobes back in the brain, the mm. visual cortex. It re responds to lines and things like... Um, and, and, and basic shapes, basic lines and shapes. So what I think is that when you have sleep paralysis, for example, your brain says, look, I don't want to hallucinate a monster with like, with detailed a face and a, like a perfect, like, you know, a clothing and all that. I just want to have the basic shape. So I'll just use my visual cortex and then just think about how to get out of this room, escape routes and all that. Right. The reason for this, Julian, is that visual... The there's one third of the cortex is for, for vision alone. We have 30 centers for vision. Vision is very costly. It's a very costly, costly process to see. So your brain is always in the business of how can I see things in the world using the most efficient way as, po as possible. So for the brain to just say, look, I'm just going to visualize a shadow over there and the hell with the rest and I can focus on other things. That's just a way to get out of it. So that's the first step. Now, Occasionally, then, you might see the shadow moving, right? And that's because we have a part of the brain called the MT, the, 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 the motor, the, it's called the MT, okay? It's not the motor, but it's called the MT region. It has to do with movement. Mm. So the visual process will also recruit that center. And so for that reason, you have movement of the monster. That's part of the visual hierarchy. The next step, think of it as a, as a ladder going next step up. In fact, the MT, if I get a stroke in the MT and I drink a cl glass of water like this, the water will go like this. It won't flow. It go like like a black and white mo movie from 100 years ago. It go like this. Or if I if you see a car, I won't see it and as floating and moving like this. It will be like... But yeah, like shitty frame rate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's the MT. Next, you have in the visual hierarchy, you have something called V4 color vision okay occasionally the monster will actually have color that's because you next step in the hierarchy is v4 mm -hmm. color then in the hierarchy you have things like face face area of the brain do you know the brain has a face area it's called the fusiform face area if that reg aware. if that region is messed up and i look at a face i won't able to recognize faces in fact one of my one of my colleagues uh well, my old friend died. he died a few years ago called Oliver Sacks you should look him up he's a mm. famous writer of uh, neurology can you come a little yes. bit that's why sorry yes yeah. he's a famous writer of neurology I'm just mentioning this to brag but uh, uh, Robin Williams plays him in a movie once he was walking here in New York Oliver Sacks he was walking here in New York and he ran, ran into a man he saw this man he, he went ran, ran straight into him and he was like this what's going on and then he looked again and he realized it's actually a mirror and it's myself I'm looking at he has he had proposognosia. Proposognosia. A condition where you can't recognize faces. So the face area of the brain is not working. So that is the fusiform face area. Okay? Whoa. 
Yeah, here he is. Like, he even looks like Robin Williams yeah. a little bit. This guy was a phenomenon. So I, oh, I, he's dead. Oh, he's I was dead, just going to ask you if we could bring him on. Oh, yeah. You, uh, this guy was a superstar. I mean, this was one of Ramachandran's friends. So because of Ramachandran's, I, I, I would meet superstars like this and become friends with them. And Oh, yeah. Awakenings. Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was he was a great guy. We used to correspond by right. He would write hand handwritten letters. You remember? Do, do, can you mind? Can you imagine this? Handwritten. I, I do them. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. He would write me handwritten letters. Yeah. Uh, a so lost art, right there. He was a very shy guy. He was a very shy guy. He used to when we give when he give gave lectures or seminars, he would only have us like be four or five people. Otherwise, he couldn't deliver it. Mm. Such a character. Unfortunately, he passed away from. From uh, I believe it's brain cancer, but lived a years. long life though. Ninety-two years old or eighty-two years old. Yeah, yeah. When he passed. Wow. Now, now, so we have face recognition area of the brain, fusiform face area. Again, that's why you you add the face to the monster. Next, in the visual hierarchy is the vernicus area. It's the meaning part of the brain. It's called the vernicus. Again, you recruit that, and then. Things, the visual scene become more ma meaningful. And then finally, you have things like you have things like the hippocampus part of the brain, the memory part of the brain. And so you recruit memories from your daily life. This would be, I saw Freddy Krueger movie. I saw my, my grandmother told me about a story about a monster that looked like this or that. And that I will weave into the narrative. And then the visual scene will look like this. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yes. you have narrative and memory meaning you have depth you have color you have movement you have basic basic shapes and that's how your visual process works sometimes you just stop at the earlier stages of processing to recruit to 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 use those resources to a better better purpose but sometimes you you just hallucinate the bloody thing the whole thing and that's why some people literally see the hat man looking like Freddy Krueger, being in color, moving towards you, strangling you. And it comes in like different forms as well, like culturally too. That's the memory part of the brain because yeah. that's a part of the visual cortex and the visual, uh, not the visual cortex, part of the visual hierarchy. Um, and so that, for that reason, depending on your cultural narrative, that will spill into the experience. Have, have you ever read Metzger's work before? No. He's great. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you it afterwards. He does some great work on this. Kurt Metzger talking about the hat man and all that different cultural phenomenon. Ter terrific scientist. Very I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. But that's, you know, it's very, everything that you have described today, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to dreams, mm -hmm. it's, it's psychedelic in a way, no pun intended, but there's a real like math to it as well yeah, yeah. like you're describing ratios and how the ratios get distorted like everything you just described there yeah. with all the different parts and then yeah. it gets put together and voila yeah. it like spits out this thing yeah so people when their brains decide to do different ratios for them have wildly different experiences and it becomes individualized yeah that's kind of cool it's very it's very cool and on that point point of vision a key point to to emphasize is that even though vision has this hierarchy and things are going from bottom up to, to, to the higher regions and we create meaning and we create vision, we create uh, color and depth and all that, there are as many wires going from the, from the top regions down to the lower centers. And mm. by, by this, I mean the following. Vision is an active process. So when I see a table, when I see this table here, Julian's table, I won't... My brain won't go, oh, here's a table. Let me just take all the fragments and slowly create the whole thing. It actually literally will say, I've seen a table like this a hundred times. And for that reason, I merely will take a splotch from that table and then I will recruit from higher centers of memory and, and send them down to the visual centers and create the image. Meaning vision is, a, is as much or even more perhaps about expectation and interpretation versus actually what's out there. And this is a crucial point. Vision is as much about interpretation versus what actually It's a controlled hallucination. Ah. Vision is a cold, controlled hallucination. Your perceptual reality is your expectation meeting the data. It's not data just coloring everything. Yeah. It's expectation. I expect the world to look like this. Therefore, I will see this, but I will also use the data to match my expectations. That's why if you have damage to the eye, for example, you rely more of 
on expectation when you see the world versus mm-hmm. data because there's an eye damage. Same if you have damage to some of the lower part of the cortex, the visual cortex. Does that make sense? Yes. Expectation versus data is always wrestling and battling it out to find the best fit of the world. But if there's an imbalance to that sim into that symmetry, dam- eye damage, you literally see the world and then you start, suddenly you might find there's a monkey sitting there on your table. And I'm not being, uh, not no, trying no, to be funny. Yeah. I'm literally, this yeah. called Charles Bonnet syndrome. Eye damage, you will see elephants here, suddenly sitting here. Or because your expectation of the world, your conceptual beliefs will color the world. So the world is, the, the, the our created reality is always based on expectation and data meeting each other. Mm. Not about the actual thing. I see this table, your brain goes, I've seen tables like this a thousand times, so I'll just pull from memory and create a table much faster than actually going there and taking the whole table in and processing it one at a time, mm. like one fragment at a time. So this is an important part of it. Yes. And that's why hallucinations can occur all the time because, well, not all the time, most of us luckily don't have hallucinations when we are awake, but we are, as humans, prone to them because we have this conceptual overlay to vision vision is very conceptually driven very conceptually driven and so if that balance shifts towards more concept concept driven you will hallucinate more are are dreams is it a stretch to say dreams are effectively hallucinations they are in fact effectively right. a form of hallucinations they are not only hallucinations but they're hallucinations and they are we we have amnesia as well we forget them we have we are delusional, completely delusional in dreams as mm-hmm. well. So that's it's it's psychopathy at at peak, <laughs> delusion, amnesia, hallucinations, and yet it feels all normal, and we wake up and take it for granted. Mm-hmm. You know? Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below. Thank you.